So I've had many engineering interviews. I think I've had more than like 10 engineering internship interviews alone. And that included two internship interviews at NASA, which I got the positions at NASA as an intern. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you what these interviews were like, what I learned from them, and what you can do to prepare better for your interviews. Now, before I tell you about these interviews, there's a very important concept you need to understand, and that it is skill leverage. You have to have awareness, self-awareness, of how skilled you are in comparison to the rest of the workforce or to the rest of the applicants, and how skilled you are with comparison to the job that you are applying to. To. Because based on your skills and experience will determine how much leverage you have or how many options you have. For example, take the example of two software engineers or two computer science students. And one of them has never done a single project, never built anything, never had an internship. And the other guy has like done multiple internships where he has built things. He has his code on GitHub published and you can, you can go and access it. He has his projects listed in a portfolio or an employer can clearly say this guy has a lot more experience. Well, guess what? That more experienced student slash engineer is going to have more options. More companies are going to want to hire that that guy than the guy who has no experience. And this was similar to my story because when I started out, when I was my freshman year, I didn't have much experience or like uh, internships or anything like that. So I wasn't able to be too picky with the type of internships I was, get, I was getting. In my freshman year, I was in my head still aiming the things I'm interested at, but I had the mindset of I'll do like volunteer work in a lab or anything like that because I knew that I didn't have the skill and I knew that I wasn't really, I didn't really have any leverage. I couldn't really go as a freshman and say, hey, you need to pay me this much to work on this specific project. That was just not realistic or practical. So what I did instead is I uh, had a few opportunities where I was actually unpaid. So I joined a research lab in my freshman year where I was just volunteering. And I had a few other opportunities like that to build up my resume. And then I built my resume enough until I got my first paid opportunity. Now, I know you might be thinking, well, doing an unpaid opportunity, even if you're a freshman, like that's not fair because you're still putting in the work. And uh, like, yes, you're right. In an ideal world, that would not be the case. But I'm also a realist. I'm a very practical person. It's probably why I like engineering. Because I understood that I didn't have skills. I didn't have leverage. So I, I had two options. I could either just like be angry that no one was going to pay me or I could just say, okay, I'm just going to do this thing for free and I'm going to be gaining the value since I'm learning on the job and I get to put that thing on my resume. So even though I'm not getting paid in the short term, in the long term, what I'm doing is I was building my resume and gaining experience, which was going to help me get something more paid in the future. And I basically did that throughout a lot of my undergrad until I built killer enough resume just from like undergrad research and projects alone, which were, mo were mostly unpaid. And that got me my first internship interview. And my first internship interview interview was so smooth because the recruiter slash engineer just looked at my resume and said, wow, that's cool. You've built all these things, which we were already interested in. At the time I was applying to work at this space systems company and they were looking for satellite systems engineers. And I, I was leading the communication subsystem in the satellite and I understood everything about antennas, RF chains, and how the RF system talks to the software, how the software talks to the RF system, and how the satellite just as a whole works together, how how the battery feeds the, the RF system, the radios. And the conversation was so, that the interview interview was almost like a conversation because instead of the person saying, oh, tell me about your experience, whatnot, that person just looked at the, my, my resume and said, oh, so you've done this thing. Can you tell me a bit more about that? And then I started talking about it in detail because I've done the thing. And I kid you not, like five minutes and the guy just looks down. And he's like, yes, this is exactly what we want. Good. So that was my first internship interview. And I wasn't even like being picky because I knew that it was going to be my first internship. So I still had the mindset of, hey, ideally, I would like to work on communication systems, but I'm also open to anything. I could work on radars. I could work on anything that you guys have that could make a good use of my skill set. Because again, I understood that I couldn't really be too picky because I didn't have the experience or the leverage. And I was still like at the stage in my life where I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I was more open to trying new things. Now fast forward to my first NASA interview. And it was also kind of similar where I got a phone call and the engineer at the time who was working at NASA saying, Hey, I see in your resume, you've done this, that and this is what we're interested in doing It's kind of a little different. Would you be interested in doing it? And at the time, my experience was in communication systems and RF. And this opportunity was more like analog circuit design more system level avionics. But obviously for me, it was NASA Kennedy Space Center and the work, the project sounded very cool. So my response was, yes, absolutely. I'm willing to learn. I may not have those specific skill sets, but I'm more than willing to learn and I'm more excited to work on the project. And this is actually another important point that I want you to understand is that a really good employer will value attitude more than skills. And what I mean by that, like a good employer will see that you've done things. It may not be exactly related to the thing that they're trying to do, unless it's like mission critical or, or they don't have much time to train you or, or to get you to learn that thing. But in my opinion, attitude is more important than skills because you could have someone who's very skilled, but has like crappy attitude. I, I would not want to hire that person versus I can see somebody is very excited and passionate and willing to learn and has done similar things in the past, but may not be exactly what I'm trying to do. I can take a place a bet on that person and say, okay, I'm willing to bet that there, there's a high likelihood that they would learn very quickly on the job because they have the passion and the attitude to do it. And then the interview ended up being like a series of questions about what I would likely be doing and, and how capable I think I'd be doing it. And then using some examples of things I've done in the past. And at that point, 
point I was like halfway in that like leverage skill set because I had skills at previous internships, but still that was a NASA internship and I was like very grateful to be even considered for an interview. And that was awesome and I took it. Now in my most recent engineering interview I had was like, I think it was quite recent. It was with a company that builds like RF systems at X-Band, which is like eight, eight gigahertz, eight to 12 gigahertz, I believe. And in that, because I had reached a point where I'm like nearing the end of my PhD, I've done many internships, I've published research papers. I have a very good understanding of the field of my skills of like electrical engineering as a whole of, on a system level. And I'm very good at few component level things like mostly antennas, a little bit of RF chains as well. So now when I actually have engineering interviews, it's actually very different from the interviews I had very initially on where I had not much experience because now I know I'm very aware of what I'm good at, what I like, what I enjoy, and I'm quick to filter out whether the opportunity is not something I'm interested in or not. And for example, in that recent interview I had, I was actually asking more questions than the employer or the interviewer because I wanted to figure out whether it's a good fit for me or not. And the questions I would ask would be along the lines of, hey, what kind of things uh, do you expect me to work on? And then they would tell me and I would say, okay, like what specifically would I be doing that thing and that thing? And what I'm actually doing in the process, like as a nice byproduct, is that because I'm going into so much detail and figuring out what exactly is needed help-wise, the employer slash manager slash person trying to hire me is actually gaining to quickly understanding that, oh, this guy actually knows what he's talking about and he's quickly trying to identify the problem as well, rather than just someone sh showing up and saying, hey, I'll do anything. And that's actually quite nice because for them, they don't need to spend too much time explaining to you what needs to be done. They can already tell that you have the skills and capability and curiosity to actually quickly figure out what needs to be done and then go do it yourself. And this is actually one nice thing about doing a PhD is that doing a PhD teaches you to be an independent learner and an independent problem solver. And many companies love that because they can just hire you and they would hire you so you can tell them what to do rather than them telling you what to do. So all right, I told you a lot about some of the interviews I had. And the thing I learned from it is just like, if you have no leverage, then you should be open to more possibilities. Then if you have a lot of leverage, like you have a lot more skills, you have a lot more experiences and you see that there's like the economy's doing well, there's a lot of options, then you should be more selective and you should take the initiative and in asking, is this the right for me? Would I enjoy this? And then you ask questions about, hey, what will I be doing and whatnot? And you, and you kind of take charge and you lead the conversation. And obviously you want to do that in like a humble, respectful manner. You don't want to just be like, hey, look at me, I'm so cool. Like, I don't think your company, like, that, like, please don't do that. Now onto the good stuff. How can you better prepare for an engineering interview, whether it be like now or later down the line or one year from now? And based on everything I told you, it should be pretty obvious that there's really one answer and that is just get really good at what you do. You know, build enough skill leverage. Be so good at what you do compared to other students that you have leverage and build products and build join projects and build things that you can showcase, whether in portfolios or in your resume and say, hey, I built this thing and I built this thing and I did this thing, which guess what? Your company is also doing. So I already know how to do that compared to 90% of students who have only like done classes or haven't really done anything else. And the more you can do that and the more experience you can stack in your experience portfolio and, and take and carry with you as, hey, this is this is what I've done. This is what I've done. These are the problems I've solved. And you basically showcase that to the marketplace. Well, that alone is amazing preparation for the interviews because if you're working, if, if you're aiming for a technical job, which I'm guessing what you would want to do as an engineer, most of these technical jobs will make sure that you want, that you have the skill necessary to do the job. Obviously, soft skills are important. I'm just like, I'm assuming that's given that you're able to communicate, you're able to lay your ideas, ask questions, take the initiative. Attitude is extremely important. You obviously want to show up and positive and be and, and be excited. And, and, and you can't really fake that stuff like people can tell. So ideally, you are excited. And if you're not excited about the opportunity itself, you could be excited about the fact that you have an opportunity and, and be grateful for that. And that alone will give you excitement and you'll want to jump on top of that thing and conquer it. So you want to get so much experience under your belt such that by the time you are in interviews or applying for things, you have things to talk about and that the recruiters, slash engineer, slash manager, whoever is looking at your resume or talking to you, they, you, don't, you, don't even, you almost don't even have to do any work. They can already tell and say, oh, you've done this cool thing, which we are looking for. And that's really the jackpot you want to hit. You want to position yourself such that what the company is trying to do is something you have already done and you've done really, really well, such that you can go there and do it really, really well. And obviously this is just like one way to go about things. This is what has worked for me. This is based on what my experience entails. You know, I'm not a guru. I'm just a electrical engineering PhD student who is sharing what has worked for me, what I've observed to be the case. Now, one last Last note on interviews, like prior few days prior, like assuming that you have your skill sets polished up and whatnot, you know what to talk about. You obviously want to do a little bit of research about the company itself, but I'm hoping that you would do that out of curiosity rather than out of like looking prepared. I ideally, you want to do as much as many things as possible out of curiosity. You want to build things because you want to build those things. You want to build skills because you want to build those skills and you want to prepare to, you, you want to look up the company because you're curious about what it would be like to look up for that company. And the more you do these things like organically rather than artificially, as in with the intent of showing that you're prepared, like people will tell, people can sense that. Now, I actually recently spoke with engineers from Amazon and space
SpaceX at a conference that I just attended, and they basically gave me a pretty good idea of how I would prepare for an interview or how students would prepare for an interview. And I actually made a video about it, so you should check it out.